Hi everyone, today I bring to our mobile community some exciting findings along with our painful experience. I would like to introduce Painometry, a wearable and objective pain quantification system. This is the work with my amazing team under the brilliant supervising of Fanush, Thor, Mata, Pavel, and my advisor, Tempu. It is a common question whenever a person visits the clinic. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your pain? A zero? I'm okay, really. Thanks. You can shrink now. So from your experience, how would you rate your pain? And what if it happens repetitively? Ow. On a scale of one. Ow. On a scale. Ah. On a scale. Ow. On a scale of one to ten. <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate your pain? As far as I know, it's pretty annoying. For me, as a typical PhD with long time sitting at the desk, I myself experience a terrible lower back pain, and I visit physical therapy twice a week. Every visit, I need to answer the pain rating question twice before and after I finish my session. It sometimes annoys me because I always need to think and answer the question subjectively. And another issue is that I take the pain relief in an uncontrolled manner. Apparently, many people experience the same issues. Research has shown that self Reporting is subjective because it is influenced by cognitive and emotional. And frequent self-reporting can create pain perception. And it also causes unrealistic burden on the patients. And we have consistently heard about the opioid crisis where more than 130 people die every day due to the opioid misusage and 30% in 50 million patients filled their opioid prescription after the surgery and 29% of the pain patients misused their opioid prescription. Therefore, there is a critical need for a more objective measure of pain that is efficacious and convenient for the daily usage. So how do we define the pain? Most common pain categorization is divided into acute and chronic pain, where acute pain refers to the short-term effects of the pain and is directly related to the soft tissue damage with the sharp and dull sensation. And chronic pain refers to the pain that persists and reoccurs intermittently. In the case of patients who undergo surgery, at first they will develop the acute pain and the chronic pain may develop after three months window. Most patients are subjected to the opioid prescription following the surgery, which puts them in the risk of opioid misusage. And in this work, we focus on the aspect of the acute post-operative pain. And when a person experiences the pain, they can actively show that via their facial and verbal Ow! expression. Ow! Surely! Ow! <laughs> Surely! That really hurts! Interestingly, besides those, our body also has an autonomic, involuntary response to the painful conditions. The autonomous nervous system modulates the perception of pain in the limbic brain regions and regulates other bodily functions without our conscious input, including the muscle activity, the brain signals, sweat glands activity, and the heart function. And all these response can be captured well via conventional devices and sensors such as EMG, EEG, GSR, and PPG sensor. Existing works in pain quantification, including the fMRI system that precisely capture the brain activity. Other biopotential systems that can capture brain signals, muscle activity, and the skin conductance. And video systems that capture the facial expression. 
But those systems have the same drawback of being expensive and bunky, and they are not fit to the daily usage purpose due to the mobility issues. And there are certain challenges in realizing a mobile system for pain quantification. First, we need to minimize the hardware and electro setup, yet keeping a sensitive and high accuracy system. Second, we want to focus on finding specific sets of features that are related to pain only. And third, we have to deal with the noises issue in the wearable device, that is the motion and the crosstalk noises. We propose penometry a wearable and objective pain quantification system that can be integrated into different form factors such as a headband, a hat, and a pair of glasses. We propose a sensitive sensing method that captures exactly the muscle activity of the muscle group that related to the pain. That enables the capability of manufacturing a wearable and multimodal sensing system and developing a reliable pain quantification protocol. Our multimodal sensing system has the sensing hardware with electrodes attached to the forehead of the users, including the, our proposed muscle activity sensors and other convention EEG, GSR, and PPG sensor. The sensor data are recorded and streamed to the mobile device via Bluetooth Upon receiving the data streaming, signal preprocessing cleans the signal and removes unwanted noises. And the meaningful parameters are extracted correspondingly to each sensor type. Then the pain quantification module will extract the features from those parameters, eliminate the redundancy in the features, and run a pre-trained machine learning model to quantify the corresponding pain level. Let's start with the sensing aspect. With the goal of having a mobile system, we look at the conventional biopotential sensors, including the EMG, EEG, GSR, and PPG. Among those to capture the autonomic response of the pain perception, we focus on the muscle activity for the room of improvement. There are two facial muscle groups that are automatically response to the pain perception. The first one is the corrugator, which is a small and narrow muscle close to the eye. This one draws the brown downward to form a frown. The second one is the zygomaticus, which is the muscle group near the cheek that makes one to smile. EMG sensor is difficult to capture the activities of these groups because they are small and got overlapped by other facial muscles activities. One of the convention solutions is to have multiple sensors that can capture biopotentials from other muscle groups and then using regression to extract the necessary information. However, this approach requires additional electrodes that attach to the head we turn our focus on the impedance sensing approach to capture those tiny muscle movement. Impedance measurement utilizes the AC current to measure the unknown impedance between two electrodes. In human muscle application, the impedance value here depends on the signal frequency, the resistance, and the capacitance of the selected muscle. Therefore, sweeping through a wide range of excitation frequencies gives us a profile of the selected muscle groups, so-called impedance profiling. When the facial muscle change due to the pain, the impedance measure at a specific frequency will change correspondingly. If we correlate the excitation signals with the signal that pass through the selected muscle groups, we can find the magnitude and the phase of the unknown impedance, respectively. This technique uses discrete Fourier transform to correlate those two signals. It has the advantage of 
giving the best calculation accuracy of an unknown impedance and require the smallest memory space in the hardware realization. Here is an example of capturing the movement of the corrugator muscle using the sweeping range from 10K to 100K. Our SIP sensor is dedicated for muscle activity, but because it might catch the form positive from the normal facial expression, we integrated it into a multimodal sensing system in order to capture all other autonomic response due to the pain perception. Conveniently, literature has shown that the EEG, GSR, and PPG can be captured from the forehead area. The SIP sensor is designed to operate out of the brain rhythm ranges and under safe current thresholds so that it does not interfere with the human brain and the EEG sensor. EEG sensor utilizes the driven right leg circuit design to eliminate the common mode noise coupled into the human body. And both EEG and GSR hardware has low pass filter to eliminate the effect of high frequency AC from SIP generator. And GSR hardware also operates under the safety threshold. Combining with an off the shelf burn sensor and a low power microprocessor with Bluetooth module, we fabricated our hardware in modular design so that it is simple to integrate them into different variable form factor later. Here is the examples of SIP signal during our pain stimulation experiment and the change in the spectrum of EEG and the trend of GSR and PPG signals. Having the dedicated sensors and sensing hardware, we now try to look for the appropriate pain quantification approach we carefully design a pain stimulation protocol that delivers acute pain safely and correctly with four states of pain, pain-free and three pain levels. The pain level is controlled via the veil pressure that creates the different pressure on subject's thumbs and the pressure applied on the subject's thumb scales proportionally to three veil pressure levels this level serves as our ground truth and label for our data. At the end of each stimulation run, the subjects will rate their pain. The average pain rating shows the correlations of the pressure level to the subject's rating on each stimulation run. Having this accurate protocol for ground truth label, we extracted all temporal, spectral, and nonlinear features from capture signals parameters and eliminated the redundancy with different feature selection methods and tried different classification techniques. You can refer to the detail of each step in our paper. And putting all pieces together, we now have the penometry with different form factors, a headband, a head, and a pair of glasses, which yield the 89.5% and 76.7% of accuracy when classifying three and four pain states, respectively. These are reasonable and reliable results when comparing to other quantification methods of experimental pain based on state-of-the-art laboratory sensing system using fMRI or other biopotential sensors. Our future work includes the further optimizations for sensors and hardware. We are also seeking approval for the next stage of evaluation with the in the wild and chronic pain subjects. And we look forward to extending SIP for other surface muscle activities sensing applications. That concludes my presentations. Thanks for your time and attention and I am happy to have your feedback and questions.